Have you always had thick skin when it comes to writing criticism? God, no. Um, I'm not even convinced I have thick skin now because I, I'm, I'm very good at taking a note from someone and trying to figure out like how to fix it or if I don't understand the note, like how to find the note within the note sort of thing and see like if what the, the deeper problem is to fix it overall. But I still, there are still some notes that make me upset where I'm like, how could you not understand this? It's right there on the page. Um, yeah, so it doesn't happen as frequently as it did when I was younger and, and was newer, but, and I try to keep that at bay where if like, if something even irks me just a little bit, like, thank you for the note. And then I'll come back to it later and be like, okay, maybe there was something there. Let's take a look at it, calm myself down. Uh, but nobody's perfect and I sure as hell am not either. What would you tell someone who wanted to quit their day job today so that they could pursue screenwriting full time. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Again, like there, I couldn't find the chapters in the book uh, in a quick. But you're not, you're not going to get rich right away, and you're definitely not going to get rich right away without having some way to pay your rent. And there's no reason to go homeless in the pursuit of it. Like there are plenty of people. Uh, what's her name? J.K. Rowling. Like she was going again like how many like hundreds of rejections before her book finally got picked up she, if she didn't have her job like she would have been like homeless like even more because was, i've read stories where she couldn't feed her kids or whatever it's like that would have been even worse if she had quit her job to write that book you don't quit your job until you even and even once you've had a success you don't unless it's a tv thing where now your new job is writing in a writer's room um because like i said it, even if you sold your script for a hundred thousand dollars after you pay all your stuff, you got like $40,000. And how much are you making in the year, right? Like compare that to your job. Like, sure, if you want to take a year off, but don't, if you're quitting it to start pitching stuff, that's insane. I'm sorry. You, <laughs> like you need to pay rent. You need to eat. You need to feed your kids and family if you have that. Uh, your dog would appreciate having some food as well. Like do not quit your job until you are making enough of an impact where you can just survive on the screenwriting. What do you want 20 year olds to know about screenwriting? 20 year olds? All right, it's been a long time for me. I'm 36 now, so. Uh, okay, so not everything has to be a video game or a comic book in movie form. Those are great, but not every movie has to be like, and they're not gonna buy your superhero script unless it's from an IP. Uh, I've made the mistake of writing my own superhero and nobody cares because it's not, it doesn't already have the audience, you know. That's, whereas horror, you can come up with original horror movies and it's awesome, we wanna see it. You can come up with awesome action movies. It's original, we wanna see it. Don't, don't write adaptations. There's a don't write adaptations of things you don't own the rights to and second of don't write an original superhero movie because nobody cares unless it's an adaptation. It's very, Oh, interesting. Thing. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you can get the rights to a superhero, by all means, get the rights and then write it. But don't write your own superhero. And don't try to write an adaptation of something you don't own the rights to. Uh, I've seen a lot of people in the forums, like on, on Facebook, who are wanting to write their own Spider-Man movie. You don't own the rights to Spider-Man. No one will ever see that. And in fact, they may even try to sue you if you try sending it to the people who do own the rights to it. So... Um, I made that mistake once. Again, when I was first starting out, I wrote a, superhero, a Superman script, not knowing I couldn't do anything with it. Um, I wrote an adaptation of the Vagina Monologues, uh, not knowing that I couldn't do that. And then I got in touch with people, found out the rights are already owned, so blah, blah, blah. Didn't work. Um, that's, that's the thing. Don't, don't adapt something you don't own because you're just going to be disappointed and waste your time. What about advice to 20 year olds on mindset? Like don't get too high or too low. I think when you're younger and you come here and everybody's so in awe of, of young people in, in Hollywood, um, it's easy to really, to go on these roller coaster rides because people are telling you how amazing you are sure. or they're either so, telling you you're not and then they just told you yesterday you were. Right, so don't let um, rejection hurt you too bad because they're not necessarily rejecting you, the person, they're rejecting your script. And a lot of people seem to take a, um, a rejection of their script as a rejection of them personally, like, like as if 
if because I didn't like your script, I hate you. Now, I don't hate you. I don't know you. You could be a wonderful person, but I don't like your script. It's, <laughs> it's, not, it's not a great story. I'm sorry. Um, but it has nothing to do with the person. So don't let the rejections be personal for you. And on the flip side, don't rejoice at every minor success or something that even looks like a minor success because it can still fall through. I can't tell you how many times I've had this amazing looking deal that then just gets yanked out from under me for whatever reason. You know, I, I had a producer a few years ago who was gonna pay me like 20 grand to write a, a pirate movie for him. And then all of a sudden his investor who was giving him, it was, it was for like, a, like an $80 million budget or something like that. And then he was like, oh, I have the money, blah, blah. I'm gonna send you the stuff. I'm gonna send you the, the, the $20,000 check to start writing like next week. Didn't hear from him next week, didn't get a check. So I call him up. Oh yeah, so my investor dropped out. Um, or another one where I was supposed to get hired to write a sequel to a, a horror movie. And then like the producer just stopped communicating with me all of a sudden, no reason given, just stopped. Uh, I even had one producer who literally died during our oh, negotiations. So that didn't happen, you know? So it's like, there's always, always something that can make it go wrong. So don't start celebrating until the check is cleared is the, 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 the rule of thumb I've got on that. Like I, I'm, it's fabulous that people are interested in my stuff, but until like there's a contract signed and money in my hand, it could go wrong at any time. And even after then, they're still playing movies that sell for millions of dollars, the script, and then the movie never comes out, you know? So uh, stuff dies in development hell every day, you know? Uh, so nothing is a success until it's 100% successful. What's your favorite movie about the industry? I really like Trumbo. Uh, that was a really fantastic movie. Um, Why did you like it? Acting, Aside from Brian Cranston. Yeah, yeah. Cranston's amazing in almost every, it he's even much. great in that new Mountain Dew commercial. Are you kidding me? Um, he's fantastic. Seeing how the industry was at that time is interesting to learn. There's been other movies that have shown that, like uh, I don't know if you may have not seen The Majestic with Jim Carrey, uh, where he played a screenwriter who ended up getting blacklisted, you know, um, because they thought that he was a communist or whatever. It's, and it's that same time period. And so it's very interesting to see how the, the, all the world of Hollywood is being shaped by hearsay. Yeah. Um, and then to still see how Trumbo and his friends kind of like circumnavigated the issue in a creative, clever way. Like, yeah, they took a huge, cut in their paychecks, but they still did what they love, you know, and yeah, it was just a really interesting look at what the, the industry was like back then and then how people could get around that um, and how they all changed today. And then again, Brian Cranston's a freaking genius. Yes, he so, is. You know. <laughs>